All right, so I got the 24 by eight and a half uh, trailer behind the new Jeep with the Kubota on it with a shredder. So this is the heaviest load that I have on this trailer period because I never had the shredder on there and that shredder is a really heavy duty shredder. Uh, so yeah, it's a little far back on the trailer and that's because it was squatting really bad. I want to shorten up my receiver hitch a little bit. Um, it's not on the bump stops, but it's pretty close. And uh, so this Jeep's ready to tow 7,650 pounds. Um, this trailer's 3,000 pounds. The tractor's about 4,500 pounds. So we're right at the max limit for this Jeep towing. Um, the trailer does have brakes on both axles and I just installed a trailer brake controller, which was the biggest piece of shit on earth. I'll tell you a little about that in a minute. Um, but as you can see, it's squatting pretty good. Uh, tires look okay. That's in the standard 40 PSI in them. We're gonna see if it tows better than a Tacoma. I did tow this similar setup with the Tacoma. Only difference was I didn't have the shredder, which is about a thousand pounds, believe it or not. So um, yeah, we'll see if it's better. It should be better than the Tacoma on paper. It's got a better towing rating. It's got a better transmission, lower gears, wider axles, more horsepower, more torque. So it should tow better than the Tacoma, but it's a Jeep. So we will find out if this Gladiator can actually really tow worth a damn. Um, if I was gonna do this again, I would put the bucket on there instead of the forks so I have the tractor slid forward a little bit more and keep the back from overhanging. But as you can see, there's uh, there's plenty of tongue weight the way she sits right now. So this, uh, this should be interesting. You might need to add airbags to the Jeep eventually. And for everyone that says this is dangerous, you're stupid, whatever, well, I hate to break it to you, this is legal and I'm a good driver. So uh, keep your opinions to yourself because I sure don't care about them. So I just did my first towing with the Gladiator with the trailer control and everything. Dropped off the Kubota. Got the big red trailer back there. Empty now, of course. Um, this trailer brake controller actually did work pretty good. Uh, however, it's designed in the laziest way possible and the cheapest way possible, and it's not cheap. So uh, everyone got all excited when then Mopar set up and came out with the factory trailer brake controller for the Gladiator. Great, we love factory parts. That's why I got it. Keep everything as factory as you can, right? Well, turns out it's lazy and it mounts exactly where your cigarette lighter was. And if this truck had like, you know, two or three cigarette lighters, no big deal, right? You only really need one. That's where I plug my radar detector into. However, this truck only has one cigarette lighter. And now there's a trailer brake controller knob there. I didn't really like the factory cigarette lighter location because when you plug stuff in, it got your wires tangled up around your transfer case shifter, which I use quite frequently because I'm a man. Um, so now I've got to find a place probably down in there to relocate my cigarette lighter to. Just really poorly thought out. And on top of that, my, my a switch came assembled wrong. I had to take it apart and clock it differently to get it to work properly, which is real stupid. And on top of that, it doesn't give you a whole lot of indication that it's working other than this little green six kind of turns, barely turns red. You can't even see it in the daytime. So real stupid trailer brake controller. It's not integrated into the dash or here, this screen, or there's no lights up here to tell you the trailer's hooked up. It's pretty bad. I have had the Chevys and the Fords with the built-in trailer brake controllers. Um, I've added it to a Ford and it was integrated with the dash very well. This is basically an aftermarket trailer brake controller with a Mopar thing stuck on it and it's worse than the aftermarket ones and it's three times more expensive. So I highly recommend you buy an aftermarket trailer brake controller and put the knob somewhere else and leave your cigarette lighter in its factory location. Um, if I'd have known any of that, I wouldn't have bought this one, but there were no instructions available online. So I had to kind of just buy it and figure it out. So learn from my mistake, don't buy the Mopar thing. I'm learning that a lot of Mopar accessories are pretty freaking stupid. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's my two cents on that. Also, it's a pain in the butt to take out your stock cigarette lighter. You pretty much end up having to pry it out, see how gouged up it is right there, and kind of destroy it, unless you have some special tool. So yeah, don't do that like I did. Um, this is the biggest piece of shit I've ever spent any money on. Tires and where they're routed and how this thing mounts is really, really poorly written in these instructions that are, I mean, they, they read like Chinese instructions. There's like one word for each thing in English and there's a bunch of stuff in other languages. So real freaking helpful Dodge. Here we go, towing the Kubota behind the Gladiator on my eight and a half by 24 foot trailer. We're about to get on the old turnpike, see what's what. I know all you guys think you need a diesel 3500 to tow 5,000 pounds, but it turns out you're wrong. Um, now this is not something I do every day, but I bring my tractor in for service, you know, once every six months. So totally acceptable. I would like some wider mirrors, but the Jeep's doing okay. So let's see how it accelerates onto the highway all the way up to the tachometer. There is no tow haul mode in this Jeep, even though it has the max trailing package, which I found kind of frustrating. 
but it's just that beautiful, sweet, smart ZF transmission that should be able to figure it out. So definitely knows there's a load back there. 65, and we're about to go into fourth gear. Maybe, maybe one day. Ah, fourth gear, there she is. So we're on the highway, 70 miles an hour, fourth gear. It's not really swaying or anything. I do have it loaded a little bit front heavy, pretty close to the bump stops. Um, you can see the tractor back there. So I'm towing right at this Jeep's maximum capacity, which is 5,600 pounds. I'm probably, or excuse me, 7,650 pounds. I'm probably at 7,500 pounds. So yes, this is legal, and I do have trailer brakes, um, the most annoying trailer brakes on earth, which is the um, little breeze there, a little bit, little bit windy, made it kind of sway some. Um, that's the Mopar trailer brake controller, which I'm not a fan of at all. I'll tell you more about that later. But now we're in sixth gear, we're turning 3,000 RPMs at 70 miles an hour, and we're getting a steady state fuel mileage between nine and 10 uh, miles per gallon. That's that big number that they keep recording so we can show you braking. I've got the gain set at five. When it goes red, that means it's applying current. Uh, that's the only indication you have. There's nothing integrated on the dash or the screen for the trailering, unfortunately, which I find very frustrating. Um, let's do the override so we can feel it. You can definitely feel it. It's definitely working. Um, now we're going to stop fairly quickly here. Wow, it stops pretty dang good. I'm not going to say I don't feel the weight back there. You definitely know it's there, but um, sorry Tacoma and sorry. It really, it really stops better than the 1500 Silverado I rental I pulled it with as well. And this actually has a shredder on it, so I'm towing more weight than I did with either one of those setups. So uh, pretty happy with the brakes on this truck. I'm not surprised that it stops better than the Jeep or the, the Tacoma because it has disc brakes in the back. The Tacoma still has stupid drum brakes. So uh, yeah, a little bit more modern brakes. Feels pretty good, honestly. Three miles per gallon. I'm not like foot, foot, foot to the floor or anything though. I mean, it's definitely more drivable than the Tacoma was. The Tacoma, I was really winding her out. Um, this is actually doable. V6. Can it get to highway speed before we have to merge? And it can. Excellent. Into fourth gear. And the catch up, though, boys. 90 miles an hour. Into fifth. Pretty good. Braking. Sing toe is pretty good. The only issue is the semi-soft rear suspension. 